Kalaimhamini Embar S Kannan hails from an illustrious family of musicians living up to the dreams of his father Sangeetha Bhushanam Shri Embar Sadagopan Kannan took to the violin at the tender age of 6 he had his initial training in carnatic music under Shri Subhanna Bhagwatar and Shri Vittal Ramamurthy and in western classical music under music director Divakar Master he then continued his formal training in violin under Sangeetha Kalanidhi Kumari Kanyakumari Kannan is an eight top grade artist with All India Radio and he is universally acclaimed as a violinist with extraordinary bowing quality and remarkably sweet playing as an accompanist Kannan is acknowledged as a violinist par excellence Kannan's debut to cinema music was through the movie Puli Petra Pillai by Shri Divakar when Kannan was just 11 years old this marked the entry of Kannan into the cinema world Soon he started to play for Kannada movies under the music direction of Shri Vasu Rao son of the legendary composer Shri Rajeshwara Rao It is a blessing for Kannan to be part of Maestro Ilai Raja's troupe since 1991 He has also worked with other leading South Indian music directors Kannan brought a new dimension to his music when he used distortion pedals typically used with the guitar on his violin This new attempt received critical acclaim from European connoisseurs in his performances with fusion artist Sushila Raman in 2006 he has many collaborative works across the world kanan also started composing as early as when he was 18 by venturing for the tele serial manida kadal in 1993 kanan has composed music for several classical and devotional albums his jamming sessions with co-artists are more intriguing for music lovers he explores various genres of music sets new arrangements and brings out a lot of improvisation so much uh, shri kannan for joining us for this episode of sambadanam i'm so glad you were able to take time off and join us today namaskar thanks for inviting me thank you so much C- can you share a little bit about the different types of violins you've used and their context of use um, you know and that would really help us to understand a little more about it sure certainly i'll do that so first to begin with i just want to show you the usual acoustic violin that's a the normal uh, full size violin that we call it as so this is a normal acoustic violin that we generally use with four strings on it and uh, this we could have seen it like uh, it's, it's, it is a usual uh, violin message so this is one thing and uh, this is a violin that i use for regular kacheris uh, concerts like where i accompany um, a vocalist but based on their uh, pitch for example if i am playing for a female artist obviously the pitch will be on the higher side so accordingly i will have the strings set for that so and if i am playing for a male artist then obviously it is on the lower frequency so i will have thick more thick strings for that so earlier in my um, you know my beginning stage you know of my musical journey i used I didn't have that many violins, so I used to just keep changing the strings for the same violin back and forth. See, for that example, that would be very, uh, you know, it would be quite a bit of effort, no? Yeah, it's it's more than the effort. I was more concerned about the violin as such. See, that is not the way, you know. It has to be done. Like, see, imagine like today I'm playing for a female artist, so my it will be tuned to G or G sharp, Shruti. So the very next day, if I'm playing for a male artist, it will be like C or C sharp. So again, what I'll do is I'll just remove the whole set of strings and then put another set of strings with a different gauge. So, but generally, the you know what they even the violin maker what they say is you can't you shouldn't do it like that quite frequently. Keep changing it. So anyway, by music's grace, you know, and later part of my life, I. Bought lots of violins. That's my dream, of course. I just my dream is to have violins fully in my house. Nothing else, no other prop. <laughs> so that's my dream. So I'm working on it. So then later stage when I got more number of violins, so what happened? I just fixed each violin for each shooting. So then that problem got resolved. But oh, that's lovely. So, it's, a, it's a very practical solution. You have one violin dedicated Correct. to one shruti. There is no confusion or, you know, the last minute changes and yeah. 
And the violin also uh, will not be affected in the sense what happens when you keep changing it, suddenly you would have probably noticed while you are playing, suddenly the tune, tuning of the violin will go off in certain people's violin. So that's because you're frequently changing the strings and things like that. So it is becoming weak. And this is the design. So this is, uh, this is called a uh, silent violin. By the company named Yamaha. Ah, so it's a silent. Perfect. It's called silent. Yes. And um, not many people, when they go for performance, they are very, very inquisitive and curious to know why it is called silent violin. In fact, right. uh, uh, I still remember, you know, one of the uh, you know, organizers, when he wanted to fix my concert, sir, he said, uh, sir, they said that you use silent violin. So can we hear you? So I said, excuse me, I am, I am being invited to perform. So obviously <laughs> you hear me. So that was what I like to say. But the thing is, now it is it's basically an electric violin, that's all. So electric violins, if you notice, there is no body for this violin. Compared to the earlier violin that I showed you, there's a body to it. Here there's there's no body, so no resonance. So you generally have a thing called sound post inside that violin. So that is what that resonates the sound. And that's what we hear. So this electric violin, this doesn't have a sound post. Instead, it has got, you know, a setting here, a preamp right here. Hope you can see. And uh, this is basically connected to another uh, small gadget and it is routed through that and then finally you need an amplifier speaker to generate sound. Okay. Okay. So you need all those gadgets to produce sound. Otherwise, if you see this, I'll just strum this acoustic violin. So this is the sound of this violin. On the contrary, that's all. That's all. Yeah, so basically it is completely, it's, it's a kind of muted, like, you know, it's, it's very silent. So that's why they named it silent violin. So that is the reason behind it. Not that it will not produce any sound. You just need the gadgets no. to bring out the sound. Correct. So you need those uh, other accessories to produce sound on this violin. But once you have that, that's what, in fact, in one of the concerts, they say, like, it is a silent violin when it is not amplified. But when it is amplified, it makes others silent. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> so, yeah. so that is the thing. And uh, one more thing, uh, which is uh, not a normal thing, which is it has got five strings. Generally, uh, they know people. Uh, they know people know that the violin has only four strings. So they come up with all this new thing. So this, this has got five strings, where it's like E A D G, and I have one more lower frequency, which is called the C. So I get more range while I'm playing with this. So I, I use this violin generally for a fusion concert or when right. I'm playing with some harmonic instruments. At that time, it really helps, you know, when, for the sound to just uh, come through. Right. Viola. So this is a viola. It's, you can see the it is, it's broader and uh, it's a bigger one. And see, hear the sound. It's more on the lower register, like. So basically, the, the, you, you would have heard the violin family as such, like violin, as I'm telling you in the order of the frequency range from top to bottom. Violin, viola, cello and dumb bass. Okay. And even the size wise, violin is the smallest, then viola, then cello will be big and the double bass is the thing you would have seen in jazz concert or where people used to stand and play. Exactly, exactly. It's really huge. It's almost higher. Than huge. Huge. Yeah. And that low register, you cannot get that frequency anywhere else. That's just for that open string sound, I will just die. That's yeah. amazing, that frequency. So it's so wonderful. So 
this is the violin family as such. So, and what, oh, this I got last year, the interesting part about this is, see if you notice the size, not much of difference. So generally, violas are bigger than the violin. Okay. But the plus point is they made 13 and a half inches viola, which is pretty much closer to a full-size violin. Right. But with a bigger body. So in that, the, the plus point of this is my fingering doesn't change that much. Ah. See, what happens? When you play a violin and then immediately a viola, you need to really work on it. The notes on a violin is comparatively closer than the notes in viola. It's farther. And in cello, it is even more farther. Farther, correct. And that was really too far. Like. So th the advantage of this is any violin player can just take this and play it without much of practice. But the the sound of viola you get. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. It's a very practical application. Exactly. That's what. So this is what about the uh, violin and uh, the electric violin that I wanted to show the kind of oh, different that... violins that I use. Very interesting. Yes. Is there any specific context you use an electric violin versus a regular uh, violin? Is that something special or? Yeah. So th that's what. See, I started using this electric violin because for a couple of reasons. One is I play for films since 1991, uh, mainly associated with uh, Maestro Ilayaraja sir. So what happens um, in the later, like in 2000 and all, like I started playing solos. So when you start, and film music, they want something, um, it's just, you know, each song is just four and a half minutes, but they want to make it very interesting and with all different sounds and stuff. So even though you have an acoustic violin, they like this electric violin, which is slightly, uh, it, it has got a flanger effect, or it's, it's slightly different. But that difference makes interesting, makes it the whole, whole thing interesting. So, and then that is one of the reason I bought this electric violin, to use it in the recording studios for film music. And not only that, see, I slowly started a band, you know, as my own group called Crossroads. So when I was playing the band, you know, I need to make some differences, you know, in the sound wise. And, and of course, when you are playing with the drums and keyboard and bass guitar, what happens when you go for concerts, not everywhere you get the perfect miking. And the audio system is not like the way we wanted it. Very true. So it becomes, it's, it's a big problem. When you are going with, these kind of instruments, they are like monsters. They are like plug in and play. So it is easy to, you know, balance them when you have a microphone and you try to amplify the sound of the violin to match a drum or a keyboard. Pretty much nine out of 10 times it becomes a failure because you can't get the right sound engineer or the right amplifier system. And then are you playing the right auditorium where the Correct. sound travels? There are so many aspects uh, when it goes to the sound department. So thinking all these things, you know, if you have a violin which can be very simple, at the same time, if you can convey what you want to convey, then I think uh, this is the best solution. So that is also one of the major or main reason for violin. Oh, that's lovely. I agree because we go to so many different places. Each place is so different. There's no standardized setting of a stage. You, you, don't, know, you don't know where or what occasion. So all those issues right. are always there. But I, I'm very interested because you started talking about film music. And I actually right. leads beautifully to my next question. So how have you brought your knowledge of classical music to film songs? And what have you taken as a learning from the film music? Thank you. Thanks for asking me these kind of interesting questions, you know, which <laughs> made me think. Of... Thank you. So, so the thing is, when I uh, earlier, as I told you, first I learned Carnatic music for a bit, and then I learned Western classical. Then I was focusing more on the Carnatic music, and uh, started playing small 
Kacheri is like very small concerts. First, I started playing with my sisters. They both were singers and uh, used to play with them. And then slowly I was playing some putty concerts. So that's how it started. But when I joined uh, Ilayaraja Sir Orchestra, I learned a lot of things. So, like, you know, um, it's a completely like, yeah, I learned Western classical that really helped because he always writes all his music like on the manuscript. So to begin with, that is the major first thing I learned, like, you know, it was a discipline. It's a ma main discipline where you write the notes and then play. Not just by hearing it. So that concept is all. So you have to write it and you have to do instant sight reading and you have to play instantly, not much time given to you. So you have to be really like uh, up to that mark to do that. So that is one major thing that I learned from them, uh, from, that, from that system. See, in Carnatic music, it's it's different. There's no comparison because you ask me, this is one, see, always in each system, they have like uh, lots of nice, positive, great things in which you can imbibe. So that really makes you a complete musician or an artist. So you learn different forms of music and things like that. Each has a plus point. So I, I never like to compare anything. So I just want to take the best from each system, that's all. So that is my way of approach. So this is one thing I learned. And more so, what I learned was when I went there, you have to like, in the notes, you have to write the notes, keep it on the stand, and then immediately you have to play. They'll just give you a few minutes to practice and then play instantly. So when I was 16 or maybe 17, like, you know, that's when I joined the Elias Orchestra. So it was a very new experience to just write the notes and read it instantly and you have to play it instantly, everything like instant. So one song was done, you know, the, the, the great super hit songs that we still, it lingers in our mind and heart. Those songs were recorded like, in a half a day, one song was recorded. Can't oh, even wow. it. Oh, half a day. Wow. Right. That's how it was recorded. So imagine the, uh, the capacity of the musicians then, like Correct. how they should be. See, Raja was a legendary composer, but he just gave the notes, but everybody should be like really on top of that. Correct. Their, uh, to produce it instantly. So that was a big thing that I learned. And more so like uh, even wearing a headphone, everything was very new like that. Right. <laughs> In our system, like, you know, while we play, we never wear headphones. So that was very new to me. And uh, the one more important thing was the, the metronome got introduced then. It's called a click track way back. Right. So, so we generally put talam, it is more of manolaya. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so it was where someone doing the click tracks, the machine. So you just go tick, 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 tick the rose going on. You know, you have to <laughs> hear play. So that was one thing really it was new, but at the same time, I I saw it in such a way, you know, it really worked me towards you know, uh, traveling towards perfection, the precision in Laya, you know. So whatever Manolayam we have, it may not be like as precise as a machine. So so that that is one thing I imbibed from the film music and even the Shruti perfection and uh, the togetherness, the harmony. Like we, I was one among 24 violinists so it's a, it's a great feeling, like, you know, when you are playing with so many brilliant artists and you have to be like one, the 24 should sound like one. Exactly. So it's like how you have to be in a group. So there are so many things. These are the things that actually I learned in the film industry from the film music as such. Of course, the time discipline. Because I was fortunate to be in Ilinaja's orchestra, it was like spot on. No matter what, it was happening for years together. Absolutely spot on. You start on time and end in time. So everything matters. <laughs> no, absolutely. It makes a huge difference. And as you rightly actually very beautifully said, it's not a single person. You know, you come as a team, but you come as one. Yeah. So yeah. You, it's a very humbling experience, actually. When you come in. Exactly. And 
and this sorry the, the other question that you asked what this carnatic music helped me how it helped me in film music the thing is for example later say the legends just the after i became a soloist you know so then after i started playing for different music directors so when they go that they just said see leraja was a composer everything what you hear it was composed by him nothing was left to the artist imagination and even when you hear a ting that was his he has composed it he wanted that sound to be in there so when i start working for other uh, music directors so what happened like you know they just take a, let's say the emotion is a love love or maybe a sad song whatever it is so they just give like here it is sir you have like eight bars you can just improvise so when i was given that space to improvise it was so good to know carnatic music because it is really deep rooted carnatic music nothing can um, can be compared or even compete with it so in carnatic music we all know there are infinity number of scales ragas so not that i have learned all the infinity ragas but whatever little i have learned it really helped me so because when i went there they they don't even say like you know they want to you play in this scale or anything. they will just say so this is a key like it is it's a minor scale or it's a major scale you just improvise on your own so because we have learned so many ragas in our tradition and things like that so that really comes in handy while i'm playing a solo bit so you know i can just uh, demonstrate it for you Sure, sure. We talk. So, for example, a sad song or something. So, you have to play something more, uh, or maybe melancholic. Need not be sad or so. You can immediately play like. a melancholy but beautiful so these kind of things like you know you can just play ragam like kalyana vasantam and there are so many we it's available in plenty so all those things that really comes in handy there so when i play there like they will ah sir this is what i want so that's what see they may not be able to exactly pinpoint and tell other uh, so but when we play it they say yeah we really like this so or sometimes they can can give me another option so to even to give me another option you need to know such a number of scales you know for you to give an option so in that way carnatic music really helps that is uh, the plus point of knowing carnatic music and entering into film music and the film music thing how i incorporated or rather how i used it in carnatic music concert is the precision generally the way it is being done in film music when you play in a carnatic music even for while you are playing a ragam let's say in film music everything is like the time is so critical like if a song is just about 5 minutes then it is considered as two songs so everything is like and it's all in like they will say you have to play for four bars so within that four bars you have to showcase your talent so all these minor minute things that really helps in a concert platform just say if i'm asked to play just uh, i'm not asked to play in the sense generally what happens kacheri is going a singer sings for 5 minutes but as a as an accompanist you are generally we just play half the duration of whatever the prime artist has said it's just a unset rule so nothing wrong in that it is maintaining the proportion in the concert correct correct so how that the two and a half minutes you can't see the watch then so but these experiences really comes in handy it's just there in your system so your brain will say immediately before we start a ragam any ragam like na 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 so by the way so we start correct on the you end in two and a half minutes without even looking at it because i played so many recordings and 
all these things really helps in a concept platform. This is how it is. And, and I really like the fact the way you said that you actually draw on this fountain of knowledge from Carnatic music to take into film music. Right. It just keeps coming. You can choose so many ragams. You, you just need to understand the music that it, it's limitless, right? It's just absolutely limitless. <laughs> yes. That's what, so it's, it's so beautiful. That's why, I, uh, in fact, some people, some, you know, some people will say, so which is, some questions came, some questions they asked me, which one you prefer, either Carnatic music or film music? I said, please, kindly don't ask me these kind of questions. Like, you know, I don't even consider that as a question. Absolutely. So, do not compare it to any music for that matter. So each has a benefit and plus points. It is just what you have learned from that. That's why right. maybe you can ask what is that you the question that you framed? That's why I said I really like the way you have framed the question. No, you draw from both. They're both art forms. You're learning and right. from both. That is all it is. So finally, when you blossom as a musician, it really makes you complete, like you know. Um, it really helps you to enjoy everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rather, you know, uh, narrow-minded. Correct. <laughs> Actually, you stop learning. If you're that narrow-minded, you just stop learning, which is Correct. not the best. So that's what. So this, this is what, this, by being in both these industries, when I went abroad and I was uh, playing some infusion concerts with other musicians, that really helped me. Both the knowledge, you know, the knowledge from both industries. These are the things we will realize only when we go and perform or jab with a completely another nationality or totally different set of uh, music, like glo global music. Exactly. Different musicians, That's different music, different genres. Yeah. That's when you really realize that the learning is coming into play. Correct. Without even you realize it comes. Exactly. That's the best part. There's no mode for me to, okay, now it's classical mode. It's a uh, film mode. It's yeah. not like that. Exactly. It is there in your system. Exactly, comes out. That's beautiful. How how has technology actually, you know, shaped your journey? Technology is such, uh, that's what, see, even uh, this, I told you, you know, this metronome things and all, I would rather put that into this uh, technology uh, classification. That helped me. And uh, even the pitch perfect, the tuner came in, so yes, we, we do hear and we should have the sound sense to know whether it is a perfect pitch or not. Sometimes these machines really help, you know, for you to get it even more precise, spot on. And I would say more than these two, like the uh, biggest thing is, uh, after 2000, there were lots of music where just I was called for the recording and they say, sir, we need it. The, the this eight bar or 16 bars music to sound like an orchestra, orchestral thing. So that's where technology comes into handy thing. For example, uh, first I would have played one layer. On top of that, another layer. So one artist can keep on playing multiple tracks and make it sound as if 10 different musicians have played. So. So, yeah, these are the things. Uh, this is one side is plus, the other side is, of course, uh, is affecting uh, the profession for uh, several other musicians. So, it's just the way you look at it. See, technology has benefits and um, disadvantages also. Somebody is not as played something in, in tuning or something, it can be corrected through the, the help of technology. Correct, correct. So that point, uh, I, it's actually, it's a, it's a disadvantage for the musician or the musicianship. Right. So, so it's just something, yeah, that's what, when anything is good provided, when it, if it is used in the optimum level. That's, it's like, um, Correct. So that proverb really, it works <laughs> in every field. Every department, everywhere. Very true. Very true. Uh, that's beautiful. Very true. And you have collaborated so much, both globally and 
also nationally. So what has been some of your biggest challenges uh, in collaborations and also some great memories or some really nice things that happened? One or two biggest challenges that you faced. Yeah, challenges like way back in 2006, 2006 when I was uh, traveling with uh, Padma Bhushan Sundar Imranji to perform with a group called La Ridham de La Parole. It, it's actually a French group name. I am pronouncing it in English. So it, I'm <laughs> sorry about it. That's so, it. So probably it has to be pronounced differently. Um, so when I was in that, I was part of the group where three of us were, uh, rep three, four of us were representing from India, like the Sudhar Ranganji, myself, and Amritangam artist, and uh, Mohar Singh artist. And the three other uh, Persian musicians were there. A Persian percussionist, and a Thar musician, and a singer. And then African musicians were also there. So it's, it's a very interesting uh, global music uh, representation where all these nationalities, we all came together, like pretty much we were like uh, 10 to 12 musicians on stage. We rehearsed together and performed concerts in and around uh, Europe, like uh, we performed in France, um, in several places, like we have gone to Morocco and places like that. So when I was part of that group, First in France, they, they planned to record our group, the whole group in a, in a studio in Paris. So when they went to the studio, so the thing is violin is a, it's an universal instrument. That's what I would say, because it's, a, it's an instrument that has been used in, if you notice, in several different types of music. And we have imbibed in Carnatic music also, but it is an European instrument. So it is part of Western classical. It is used in jazz concerts. It is used in uh, even a rock show or anywhere. Like, and it is used in Persian music also. So, so in the, the Persian musician, they said, would you mind joining with our music? In one of the tracks. So they wanted, I said, you know, it's a, it's a privilege. I just want to play along with you. He was, he's a very senior musician from Iran. So he came and played the instrument called Thar. I think from that sitar came or uh, I don't know. It's, it's a very interesting instrument. It's a, <clears throat> a plucking instrument, string instrument. So I was playing that. In one of the melodies, like, because again, here it comes, because we have learned Carnatic music and whatever you hear, I was able to notate it. Any music, doesn't matter. Immediately I wrote the notes. I said, okay, I'm good to play. So I went in, uh, to the room and then started playing it. One of the note was not matching with what he played, but I was playing correctly, the right note, but still it was not matching. So he was saying, uh, no, Kanan, what you are playing is not correct. So I was like, really, I was, I said, how can he say that I was not right? <laughs> <laughs> so that was the instant feeling I got. I said, no, sir. I played it correctly. No, <laughs> didn't play. I was like, but really it was not correct because the sounding was not perfect. Then I realized this is what I learned from that trip, from the recording, that there is a thing called quarter note in Persian music, which I was not aware of. It was my fault in the sense he, he played Whatever, so according to his tradition, he played perfectly. So I have to match with what he has played. So I didn't know about the quarter note. Then I sat in the studio, then I tried different things. Then I got hold of that note. Then I played it and he was very happy. And the uh, <laughs> whole thing went well. So I'll just uh, play that and show you sure, how sure. different. So, the sounding it was initially the, the melody goes like this. This was the melody line. So this is what I played. So it, it was not matching because one of the notes, see there, it has to be played like that in their tradition, the Persian tradition. But I was 
literally treating it like kirwan so i was playing it was literally if you ask me if you sense flat what i played it has it was supposed to be a little bit sharper than what i played so this is uh, it's a minute thing made a major difference in the presentation so it was like beautiful by, absolutely beautiful and that minor so, note is such a minuscule thing but uh, yes. as an artist you know these are things that are so important now that that exactly that it has to match perfectly such a small thing perhaps an untrained ear would not have picked it up so the concert with the uh, bombay jayshree ji in uh, lapland uh, it is What to say? You have to get down to Helsinki, Finland, and then go from there to Latvia. So, see, what generally I love about the European thing is the way they set or arrange a concert, even the venue also. It's very interesting and unique. Mm. See, we are used to a sabha or a organization, right. an auditorium, like that. But generally, you know, like uh, Europeans are like. very much they are nature lovers absolutely absolutely so they want to hear the music in a very serene setup like you know just with the nature so so when i went along with him we also didn't know where the concert was it was kind of cold condition only like so they said the concert is an open and i said okay fine no problem open air actually it was in lake front they made a oh. change we saw we saw the just the venue it is beautiful no words absolutely no words speechless just mountains imagine just mountains around the place and then a lake in the lake front they made up they did a stage there and they kept all the lamps on the lake the audience were sitting on the other side of the lake Oh my God! Okay, and the idea is to keep a uh, speaker here, and they want the sound to travel like in the water, like it just oh. bounces the water. Because the audience, I can't even see them. Like, they were on the other side of the lake, happily sitting in the grass and enjoying the music. This was the setup. The setup was beautiful, no word, <laughs> but it was to perform there. <clears throat> that was a real challenge because we didn't realize it was towards uh, evening late afternoon evening and uh, sunset was quite early there okay uh, it was season and uh, we sat there and our hands were frozen literally it's so cold and it is difficult for jayshree ji also like even they share the scene exactly and the interesting part is the bardangam artist he was using uh, water in his cup he, he can't even touch the water because it is damn cold <laughs> and i was using uh, you know you were seeing while he was using a uh, cotton dipped with the uh, written on a uh, coconut oil but everything got frozen see i can't okay. for which i have that but it was like a, a rock <laughs> <laughs> it was challenging but beautiful so i don't know what to say about that experience <laughs> was beautiful but extremely challenging this so, is fascinating <laughs> fascinating that you're sitting on one side the other side i can imagine in the cold your fingers would have frozen as well so it's it's very difficult to you know bring out you see the point is whether we have to admire the beauty of nature and the way that thought process how they have arranged a concert whether they have to admire that or face the challenge when i am on stage like even to play one sarigama padanisa was extremely difficult <laughs> it was quite so, that was the frozen orchestra actually almost right <laughs> yes so it's like um, too hot and cold you think it sticks like and uh, like this and that like, exactly like that it was beautiful but uh, 
uh, really uh, complex, or rather, I don't know what is it, beautiful. At the same time, it was very difficult to perform. <laughs> That's beautiful. So it was interesting, challenging, rather. I don't want to say difficult, it was challenging. True. But two artists, I'm sure as two artists, you know, you overcame it, and at the end of it, it would have been a magnificent concert. But initially, just to get into that groove takes a little bit of effort. Exactly. That initial warm-up, that's all. And for every artist, not only for me and even for Jay Shri Ji's too. Imagine when you start singing, the cold air was going in. So, so difficult to sing. And the Mridangam artist, Katram, for everyone it's difficult. So that was like this, uh, because of the climatic condition, you know, once they performed in Spain, it was a peak summer there. And they had sound in the afternoon. It was like scorching heat. And there again, uh, their idea is not to have stuff. It was a, again, this global music tour. It was an open air thing. So imagine, like, right under the sun, you have to, to sit and do the sound check. I was so scared about my instrument, whether it can bear this heat. So these are all very uh, challenging times, but memorable and uh, beautiful also. It's it's all in one. Yeah, it's like it's like life, right? That package always comes together. It's never that you can yes. put one and then use only what you want. It's always the good and uh, the uh, slightly challenging coming together. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Kannan. It was so wonderful to have you with us. You shared so many of your memories, but more importantly, you took the time to actually demonstrate the, the differences um, in the violence as well. So I think that was a major learning for us. So for that, that amount of uh, sharing of artistry is very rare. And just the fact that any point of time you're willing to pick up that violin and show us what you were trying to talk about. And I think that passion comes through very clearly. So thank you so much for taking the time off and sharing everything with us. Thank you uh, for coming up with interesting questions, which also, you know, uh, took back, you know, my memories, like, you know, my musical <laughs> journey, it's always very special. And, you know, when sometimes because of the questions like this, you know, I also, I also have the opportunity to talk about it. When the questions are framed in such a way, it is interesting for any musician even to demonstrate or say things like this. Because generally the questions are questions are very much repetitive, like you know, the usual stuff <laughs> is being asked. So totally. thank you from the artist's perspective and uh, designing the questions. So that is very important, like you know. So sometimes, you know, even even though like you know, I want to share all these things, if the question is not relevant, I cannot say all these things when the question may be something else. Right. That's why. Yeah. And, um, anyway, it's thank you, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the session. Oh, thank you so much. It was a joy for us. We definitely learned quite a bit as well. And uh, thank you for taking time off. Thank you so much. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.